Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Goblin's Drool Fairy's Rule, which is a card game of rhyme and reason for kids of all ages, and that is definitely true. This is a lovely, enchanting, fun little game. You know, basically a micro game, you know, along the lines of Coup or, oh, what's the big one? Why can't I never remember the name of it? Love Letter. Uh, you know, along those lines, but, you know, very, very sweet. This is definitely a game you can play with kids, and they will uh, just absolutely gobble it up. But, you know, adults and gamers can appreciate it, too. There is some sly, subtle strategy, um, as evidenced by the fact that Jen always cleans my clock with it, which... We'll see if that happens when she's not actually here. Okay, so let's start out. Now, at the beginning of the game, every player gets four goblins. And then one of them is a special super goblin. It's got these stars around it. And, you know, the goblins are random. And there are four random fairies put in the fairy ring. Let's put them in a little more like a ring. There we go. Put in the fairy ring. And then all the other cards are just removed from the game. So every time you're going to have like a slightly different setup because some cards just don't make it in. And what players are trying to do is get rid of their goblins and replace them with fairies. Because, of course, goblins drool and fairies rule. So the first player to get rid, to have nothing but fairies in front of them, or alternatively, the first player to have six fairies in front of them, wins the game. And so we're constantly swapping cards in and out of the fairy ring to try and get rid of our goblins. And let's see, in this game, I will be the first player, so I will be the first to attempt to do that. Now what you do every turn is, you take one of your cards, whether it's a fairy or a goblin, doesn't really matter, and you add it to the fairy ring. And then, based on which card you've added, some stuff will happen to the fairy ring and you'll potentially pull cards out. Basically, the way that works is, say if I were to put, um, you know, Earwax Stew over here. As you can see, this is a love. All the art in this game is absolutely amazing. Just so wonderful. This is Earwax Stew, the little goblin who makes Earwax Stew. And so if I put him in to the fairy, first of all, uh, what happens is, I say I'm adding Earwax Stew, and then, I have to flip any of the cards in the fairy um, ring that match with that. So Earwax Stew matches with Penny Clue. And this is a cute little Penny Clue, a little uh, Sherlock Holmes investigator fairy on a, on a penny. So Earwax Stew flips Penny Clue. And then I go on ahead and I add him to the rest. And so now suddenly there are two goblins because Penny Clue has turned into uh, Big Big Belly, as you can see. Then, this is a card I put in, I take out cards that match the same symbol that I've got. As you can see, Earwax Stew has the mushroom symbol, the toadstool, and so well, if I put him in, I would take out any toadstools. In this case, I would pull back Rainbow Swoop, and I would have gotten myself a, a starred, very nice, uh, actually pretty cool opening move, a starred fairy, which I could use later. Now, you know, and so that's basically the way the game works. You put cards in, you um, potentially flip cards that are there, and then you pull cards back out, all with the intent of getting rid of your goblins or overloading on fairies. And now it's actually interesting. You know, let's look at this a little bit more. Uh, you know, if I'm first player, I've got these two guys who will cause me to um, pull toadstools out. When I put them in, I'll pull toadstools out. At the beginning, Rainbow Swoop and Penny Clue are both toadstools. But if I put, ear, as you saw, if I put Earwax Stew in, I, he will cause Penny to flip. And now, um, on the opposite side of a toadstool is always a toad. On the opposite side of the moon is always the sun. So you always know what they're going to flip to. So if I put Earwax Stew in, um, you know, and I'd like to pull some fairies back out, I'll only get one of the two because he will have caused them to flip. So it's actually smarter for me to put in Cobweb Shock here. So let's, that, let's say this is actually my first official move. I'm going to play Cobweb Shock. And Cobweb Shock rhymes with Poppy Smock. So Poppy Smock gets flipped, and so now there's OPU, uh, the stinky goblins, and I get to pull out any mushrooms. And now, because Penny Clue didn't flip, I pull out both mushrooms, and I end up with two fairies. And that's awesome, because remember the two ways to win are get rid of your goblins or basically get an overwhelming majority of fairies. So I've actually achieved a little bit of both. I got rid of a goblin and I pulled two fairies out, and I've left Jen with a field where it's going to be hard for her to avoid pulling goblins out because two-thirds of the fairy ring is now goblins. And so that was my first move. And so, yeah, and now it's Jen's turn. Let's, I haven't even looked to see what she's got. All right, so she's got nappy hour. Cuckoo Clock, Full Moon Moo, probably my favorite, 
and Dusty Dower. And let's see now. Again, remember, you, you want to get rid of goblins. So she doesn't want to pull either of these goblins out. So she wouldn't mind pulling out Sweet and Sour, because that's a fairy. And so she could put in Nappy Hour. Um, but oh, here's the problem. No, no, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, she doesn't want to put in a thing with a sun or with a toadstool. Now, she doesn't have... Okay, so that means she doesn't want to put in Dusty Dower because that means the toadstool would end up getting Cobweb Shock. So she'd be getting rid of a, uh, a goblin just to get another goblin back. So that's no good. Putting in Nappy Hour, which is a moon, means she'd pull back Sweet and Sour. So that's pretty cool. But here's the problem. She puts Nappy Hour down, hoping to get Sweet and Sour up, but then Sweet and Sour will flip and turn into Old Man Sock. Now that's actually not bad either. Actually, yeah, what the heck. Let's go with that. So Jen is going to play Nappy Hour, which rhymes with Sweet and Sour. And so now, there's nothing but goblins in the fairy ring. And because Jen put in a moon card, there's no moon cards, Jen doesn't take any cards back out. So as you can see, that worked out really well for her. So now she's down to only three goblins. So that's pretty good, because there were um, no moons for her to bring back out. Okay, back to me, back to my turn. And so now, the landscape has changed. Let's see. So I've still got three to get rid of. This is actually pretty cool. If I get rid of Cringe and Cower, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to get rid of Cringe and Cower, which causes Nappy Hour to flip. Now, Cringe and Cower has the toad on it, and you'll notice there are no toads, so I don't take anything back. And so I've gotten rid of a goblin again, so pretty good. And now that hurts Jen, because she has Cuckoo Clock. Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, that's interesting. Yes, it does, actually. Because Jen, if she could have put in Cuckoo Clock, now if she puts in Cuckoo Clock, she'll end up having to take Cringe and Cower because there's a goblin with the, with the with the frog. So she can't give that one up. Full Moon Moo would end up making her take OPU. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That's not, I, it, it, this is the one tricky thing about the game. It's easy to get mixed up about whether you rhyme or whether the symbols match. Full Moon Moo will flip OPU. Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's do that. Okay, so Jen is going to play Full Moon Moo, which flips OPU. And now Jen gets to pull out. She put in a, a moon card, and so she pulls out Poppy Smock. And now Jen is down to three cards, and only two of them are goblins. So that's going pretty well. Back over to me. All right, so we're actually both doing pretty well. Now, let's see if we can uh, keep going. And in fact, actually, no, let's not. You get the idea. That's the whole game. You play a card, you potentially flip some cards, and you potentially pull some cards out. If you'd like to see me play all the way through and actually finish this game, you can hit the button that's on screen right now for extended play, and I'll actually finish this, um, or I'll try to anyway. Or I'll turn it into the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Wow, what a short game, or a short uh, run through. But hey, that's the benefit of doing micro games. Anyway, your choice, one of the buttons in five, four, three, two, one.